you've started cycling and you're interested in progressing to a dedicated cycling shoe that you can use with clipping pedals, but you're unsure on the benefits and you're confused by all the different options available. Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain what the benefits are and all the different types so that you can choose what's best for your needs and also your price point too. We're using DMT shoes in this video as an illustration. That's because they sponsor the channel and help make our content possible. But the points discussed apply generally to all shoe brands, so you should find the information useful. Now, the first thing to point out about cycling shoes is that they make your pedaling more efficient. This is something that we actually explored in a GCM Plus documentary. In this film, we found that the power a rider could produce while clipped in and using modern shoes was significantly more than using flats and trainers. And if you're serious about cycling and want to get more efficient, then clipping shoes are definitely the way to go. But with so many different types available, it can be really confusing, so allow me to explain. Now, the first broad thing you need to decide is whether or not you go for a road shoe or an off-road shoe, and this should be dictated by the majority of the riding that you intend to do. Road shoes, such as this, are optimised for road pedal systems and cleats. You can see a speed plate cleat attached to the bottom of this here. Now, these give you a larger contact patch uh, for greater engagement of the pedal, which can feel more stable when you're putting the power down, and people say that it's more comfortable too. But these cleat systems get clogged with dirt easily and aren't suitable for riding off-road. You won't be able to clip in once there's dirt in there. In addition to that, the cleats and the soles on road shoes are not designed to be walked in any great distance. It can feel very slippery, a bit like Bambi on ice, and it will cause them to wear at an accelerated rate. But road shoes are generally lighter and sleeker than their off-road counterparts. Off-road shoes, on the other hand, and this is the off-road version of this same DMT shoe, are designed to work with two-bolt cleats and off-road pedal systems like Shimano SPD. These cleats are far better at clearing dirt, and you also have a sole that's been built up and reinforced, often with rubber grips on the bottom, so that it is designed to be walked in off-road. The shoes are just generally a bit more heavy duty and a bit more robust, so that they can take a bit more punishment that you associate with riding off-road. And you can see that there's extra reinforcement on the toe box section here to protect the shoe compared to the road version. If you're gonna be doing performance road cycling, whether that's sportives, Grand Fondos, just long road rides, or maybe even some racing, then I would suggest you get a dedicated road shoe, as it's definitely worth it. But if you're gonna be doing some off-road riding, such as gravel or cyclocross, or just full-on mountain biking, then a mountain bike shoe or a mixed surface shoe with an off-road cleat is your friend, that's what you should go for. Also, if you're gonna be commuting and your commute involves any degree of walking whatsoever, mixed surface shoes or off-road shoes are a really popular solution because they are easier to walk in. But if you fall in love with the sport, which is quite easy to do, then you'll probably just end up getting both down the line at some point anyway. There are a few other types of shoe too. For example, if you're feeling tri-curious, then you may want to consider a triathlon-specific shoe, such as this. Triathlon shoes are essentially a paired back road shoe that's designed to be put on and off quickly to minimize the time spent in transition. In addition to that, they often have some holes so that water can drip through that you've picked up during the swim. And for winter riding, most roadies pair well, a standard dedicated road shoe with an overshoe that they put over the top. But you can also get dedicated winter riding shoes that are kind of more built up and have insulation and waterproof membranes built into them, a bit like a walking boot. And these basically combine a road shoe with an overshoe all in one. There are also flat mountain bike shoes as well, such as this. Now it has a big flat sole, so it's designed to be used with a big flat mountain bike pedal with a big contact patch, and you've got the option to take out this recess and put a two bolt mountain bike cleat in there if you wanted to use a cleated pedal. But they are, well, quite a bit heavier than a standard mountain bike shoe, but a bit trendier and a bit easier to walk around in. Now we've got the main types of shoes sorted, I'm gonna explain the different features you can expect to find and how that affects the price, starting with entry level. Like with many things in cycling, the more money you spend, shoes get lighter 
and stiffer. And entry level shoes such as these DMT R6s can be picked up for around £60 or $80. Entry level shoes often have Velcro straps as these are cheaper, but you can also find boa dials on them too, such as these DMT R5s. Boa dials are great because they allow for precise adjustment in millimeter increments and it can be done easily while riding too. Entry level shoes will often have a plastic sole and less expensive materials on the upper. This results in them being less stiff and slightly heavier. For a mid-level shoe, you can expect to pay around 100 to 200 pounds, euros or dollars. And these shoes tend to be a bit more sophisticated than the lower end ones in that the sole is no longer plastic. You can expect to find a carbon composite sole or a nylon composite sole, which is usually stiffer than a plastic one. And according to shoe brands, a stiffer sole is more efficient. Mid-price shoes often have more sophisticated, more expensive materials on the upper section. And for retention systems, you can typically expect to find boa dials, but sometimes also ratchets and even laces. And those more sophisticated materials tend to result in a weight saving too. So the KR4s, they're 230 grams for a pair in a size 42. Moving on to top end shoes. These are the best of the best. Incredibly lightweight, incredibly stiff. These are used by professional riders and those who just want the very best equipment available. You can expect to pay around 200 to 350 pounds, euros or dollars for a pair like this. Soles on top end shoes are gonna be carbon fiber. It's incredibly light and stiff and the quality of construction and the materials used, especially on the upper, are very high as well. Shoes like this KRSL, which is used by the Tour de France champion, Tadej Pogacar. In fact, this is a version of the shoe that he used. It's the KR Tour de France. So it's the same shoe, but kind of yellow and it's got his signature on it. Use a full one piece multi-layered 3D knit, which is designed to encapsulate your foot like a glove. Be very comfortable, breathable, but also provide great support to the top of the foot. And oh, it's subjective, but I think they look rather cool as well. These particular shoes feature a lace retention system. Uh, laces have the advantage of being very lightweight and also you can sort of very easily tune the exact fit and where you want them to be tight along the length of the shoe. The disadvantage of laces is that they're not very easy to adjust on the fly. And sometimes, especially during long rides in very hot weather, cyclists like to sometimes loosen off their shoes particularly on the fly. That's something that's much easier to achieve with boa dials. And boa dials come on top end shoes too, such as these KM Zeros. These are a gravel shoe, but a top spec one. These belong to Alex Payton. Boa dials that you get on top end shoes tend to be a higher spec boa dial than those found on sort of mid-level shoes. The boa dials that are higher spec are a little bit lighter and feature even greater levels of adjustability. Now I'm no sprinter, but I'm reliably informed by my friends that are sprinters that a stiffer sole is something they look for. Less stiff sort of plastic soles that can bend slightly. They can feel that flexing when they're really putting the power down in a sprint and it can feel a bit disconcerting. And it's also said to be less efficient, although the jury is kind of a bit out on this. Now, while the stiffness of a sole isn't especially relevant to me and it may or may not be relevant to you, something that is important to me is the weight of the shoe because I regularly try and defy gravity by riding up hills as fast as I can. And the weight of these bad boys is just 205 grams. So that's a significant weight saving over the entry level shoe. Because carbon soles are stronger than plastic or composite ones, it means that they can be thinner as well. And by having a thinner sole, you reduce what's known as the stack height. This is the distance between the bottom of your foot and the pedal axle. Reducing the stack height can help you feel that you're a bit more connected to the pedal with a bit greater engagement. And finally, I'd recommend going to your local bike shop and trying some on because that way you'll find the size that fits best for you and you'll be able to know if they're comfortable or not. The particular shoes that people find comfortable is highly individual and 
highly personal. And the only way to know is to actually try them on. And if you are a beginner and you're getting your first pair, I would recommend going for a more entry level shoe with a plastic sole or composite sole because, well, it should meet all of your needs. And then if you get more into the sport and find yourself, you know, reaching the limits of your equipment and needing a stiffer sole or a lighter shoe, you can always progress to that once they've worn out. And also, don't be a whopper and just go to the shop, try them on and then go buy them online. Support your local bike shop. Right, if you found this video useful, then please give it a thumbs up. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and any videos you'd like to see us make in the future. And I'll see you in the next one.